Hello and welcome to lesson 34 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at estimating the area under a curve. Um, there are going to be two lessons on this. Lesson 34, we're going to be looking at estimating areas using rectangles and finding a lower and upper bound. And in lesson 35, we're going to be using the trapezium rule to find areas using various trapezia under the curve to get a better estimate than we can using rectangles. So. Let's look at this example. By using rectangular strips of width one, find firstly a lower bound and secondly an upper bound for the area between the lines x equals zero, y equals zero, and the curve y equals 16 minus x squared. Okay, as with all of these, it's really helpful if we can visualize the problem, so then, then we can solve it. So here is a graph I have prepared earlier. Here is the graph of y equals 16 minus x squared. If I want to find the area between the lines x equals 0, y equals 0, and this curve, then that is really this area here. Okay. The line x equals 0 is the y-axis. The line y equals 0 is the x-axis. So if I want to find the area between the x-axis, the y-axis, and that curve, it's the area that I've just shaded there. So. I want to find a lower bound by using rectangles of width 1. So my rectangles have to be one wide, so they're going to be there are going to be four of them because I have a space that is four wide at the bottom of this graph here. So my rectangles are going to require these heights. Okay? So, if I want a lower bound for my area, I want an area of set of, of various rectangles which are less than the area that I require. So from these, if I if I create rectangles that go under the curve, so there's my first rectangle, there's my second rectangle, there's my third rectangle, my fourth rectangle is actually has zero height because my final point is on the x-axis. So my four rectangles there create a lower bound for my area. I know those four rectangles, the total area of them, is less than the area under the curve. So that will create a lower bound. I know that the area under the curve will be greater than that. Okay, so let's find that area. So we're going to call these area, area A for that rectangle, B for the second one, C for the third one, and D for the for the fourth one, which doesn't seem to have any, any height at all, okay? So the area of A is equal to, well, area of a rectangle is the length times the width. The width we know is one, and the length of this rectangle is basically the height of this rectangle. Then the height is not it is the height at that point there. It's, it's the value on the curve. It's the y, y coordinate on the curve when the x coordinate is 1. So really it's the function done to 1. So if I substitute 1 into 16 minus x squared, I will get that y coordinate when x is 1. And that'll be the height of that rectangle A. So 1 times f of 1 will give me the area of A. F of 1, if I plug 1 into 16 minus x squared, I get 15. So this rectangle is 1 wide and 15 high, so it has an area of 15 units squared. Area B is 1 wide, and it is the height of the curve when x is 2. So it's f of 2 high. If I plug 2 into the function, I get 16 minus 2 squared, which is 12. So I get 1 times 12. So that has an area of 12 units squared. Area C is 1 wide. It is f of 3 high, because if I plug the x-coordinate 3 into that function, I get the y-coordinate, which is the height of the, of the rectangle at that point. So 16 minus 3 squared, so 16 take away 9, so it's 7 high. So it's 1 times 7, so it's 7 units squared. And area of D, poor D, is 1 wide. It's f of 4 high, but if we plug 4 into the 
function 16 minus 4 squared is 16 take away 16, which is 0. So it is 1 lot of 0, so it is 0 units squared. So that then gives me the lower bound for my area. The lower bound for my area is the sum of those four rectangles. So 15 plus 12 plus 7, which is 34 units squared. Okay, so that tells me that my area that I wanted is greater than 34. Okay, so let's now find an upper bound, so an area that it's less than. So if I take the same heights at 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, so I get this height, this height, this height, this height, and 4 there. And instead of going under the curve, if I go over the curve, so I start with the left side height, and I go across and down, across and down, across and down, and lastly across and down. Now, the area of those four rectangles is greater than the area we require. So this would give me an upper bound that I know that the area we require will be less than that, okay? So just like before, I find the area of these four rectangles. So the first rectangle, rectangle A, is one wide, and this time it's not f of one high because the height of the furthest left rectangle is has the left side meeting the curve. With the previous one for the lower bound, it was the right side which met the curve. It was the lower point which met the curve. Here it's the highest point meets the curve, okay, and that's an f of zero, which is one lot of 16. So that's 16. In effect, B, C, and D are actually A, B, and C in the previous one, okay? Because rectangle B is one wide, and this time we're going with the left side meets the curve, so that's F of 1. Okay, so that's 1 times 15, which is 15 units squared. C is 1 lot of F of 2, because it's 2 is the x-coordinate which gives us the height at which it meets the curve. So that's one lot of 12. And D, this time it has an area. It's one lot of F of three, because when you plug three in, you get the height of that, height of the curve, which gives the height of that rectangle there. So that's one lot of seven, which is seven units squared. So the upper bound for our area is 16 plus 15 plus 12 plus 7, which is 50 units squared. So at this point, I can state that the required area is between 34 and 50, between my lower bound and my upper bound. So 34 is smaller than the required area, and the required area is smaller than 50 units squared. So that tells me that I know my area is between 34 and 50. So that helps me to narrow it down. There are better ways in which I can estimate it even further. I could have used more rectangles. I could have used rectangles of 0.5 width. That would have given me a better lower bound and a better upper bound. I could have used rectangles where they go through the midpoint between those two. And that might have been a better estimate. Okay, so I could have used rectangles, green, the green rectangles that I'm going to show here, which go through the midpoint of the curve at each part. So the midpoint there is about there. So these green rectangles might have been a better estimate. So there are lots of different ways in which we can make an estimate, but these lower bounds and upper bounds are about finding rectangles which are all below the curve and then rectangles which are all above the curve and we know that our required area is going to be between them. Okay, so have a go at this question here, which is very similar. I want you to use three rectangular strips, each of width two, Okay, before we used rectangular strips of width one. 
that. So now your rectangles have a width of two. I want you to find a lower bound by using rectangles which are all below the curve, an upper bound which by using rectangles all above the curve, for the area between the curve y equals 64 minus x squared, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 7. So not using the y-axis as another boundary. So you need to draw vertical lines at x equals 1 and x equals 7 to, to create a section of the area below the curve that you want to find the area of. Okay. Pause at this point if you don't want any other help. But I'm going to show a diagram showing this curve and showing the area you want, which might help you if you are a little bit stuck. OK. Pause at this point if you want to have a go without any of that help. OK. Showing a little bit of extra help. This question is asking for the area under the curve y equals 64 minus x squared, which will look like that curve there, between the lines x equals 1, that should be a line, not a curve, and x equals 7. So it's asking for this area here, or an estimate for it, or a lower bound and an upper bound for that. Okay, so at this point, if that, if that um, diagram has helped you, now pause, have a go. Find the lower bound, find the upper bound, state what the required error is between. If you want a little bit more help, the rectangles you want will have these heights. F of 1, F of 3, F of 5, and F of 7. You've got to think about which ones will give you the rectangles which are above the curve, which ones will give you rectangles which are below the curve. Okay, I'm going to go through the answer now. So the lower bound area is gained by creating these three rectangles, each of width two, as we asked for. So A has a width of two, so the width there, and the height is F of three, because that's where the lower point, which meets the curve. So that's 110. The next one is 78. Next one is 30. So the lower bound area is 110 plus 78 plus 30, which is 218 units squared. So that is the lower bound. The upper bound also has widths of two, but here we're using the higher point of the curve for the rectangle to give us an upper bound for the area. So the areas are 126, 110, and 78 for our rectangles, which gives us an upper bound area, if we add those together, of 314 units squared. So our answer is that the required area is between 218 and 314 units squared. Okay, so that is what the required area is between. So it'll be somewhere in that region. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to find it more accurately using trapezia, using something called the trapezium rule. And in, in future lessons, I'm going to teach you something called integration, which will help you find the area exactly using an algebraic process. OK, so what you should do now, though, is practice exercise 13.5. So the fifth exercise in chapter 13. And then in the next lesson, we're going to be using the trapezium rule, which is another numerical method to find the estimate for the area under a curve. OK, off you go and enjoy.